morning it's tuesday and uh it is a slow slow start to the day i am super super late but starting in the office because this is maybe where i'm going to end up today i want to go over i have a big day i have to um finish all the things i didn't finish yesterday because the day got away from me and i have to make sure those lambs are weaning okay and I have to weigh my market lambs this week because they go tomorrow to the sale barn. And what I wanted to do is I got my paycheck from those 13 lambs from a couple weeks ago that I shared with you guys. And I wanted to kind of go through that check. It is Sandy Math. So Sandy Math is literally just giving you an idea of how much is kind of left after expenses and stuff. So... Um, I figured I could do it in the lamb barn a little easier because we're buying our hay right now and I know kind of how much feed we're going through in a year so I'll just divide that by how many lambs I put through that barn and labor, utility, all that stuff I think I have written down somewhere so bear with me on that but that's kind of my goal for today is to just get through all my work, weigh the lambs, see how many are ready and then go through that last lamb check with you guys. Oh this is really scary. Go do my chores, please. It'd be nice. No, they're not gonna do my chores. <laughs> Hi, kids. <laughs> oh, goodness. Hi. I know. I know, it's awful. It's awful. Yeah. So I think this is actually really good for people to see that, you know, these are artificially raised lambs and they're acting like I took away their mom. So yes, there is some nurture, like there is some bonding with mom and baby. So there is a little bit of actual missing back and forth, but they do it like most of it is actually, they just like milk. They like, it's comforting. It probably tastes good because it's expensive. So whether it's mom or the milk it's just nice to see like even the bottle raised babies will cry for a couple days uh i mean it's not nice to see it's it's good to have that comparison because i think often we are, we're like how can you take the babies away from mom well honestly when they get this age like you will see it when i go to wean this pen on i think saturday by the time they get to this age mom doesn't have a lot of patience for them she lets them drink for maybe five seconds and then wax them with her feet. So she's kind of over it. They do get to an age and they don't need it anymore. That's why there's always water in those creep areas because that even helps me just see that they're good on feed and water. The more they drink and eat every day, I know they're getting less and less and less from mom. And that's not me doing anything. They still have the option of mom, but mom is the ultimate deciding factor whether that baby is getting milk or not and uh, some moms are a little more patient than others just like humans and uh, but I, I I wanted you guys to see what you know day one after day one post weaning even artificially can be loud well I better get you some water and some tea mm -hmm. it's not the water and feed they want so I got one, two, three, four pails, and they're on them nicely, which is good. You guys just have to wait your turn. So we'll see what the four does, and then I might have to put in a couple more pails. That's okay. I got lots of pails.
Okay, we're back over in the finishing barn. Just like every other time, we set, we set up our handling system. The lambs will come from that pen. I'll push them in, they'll come in through here. And go into the little crowding, it's called a crowding tub, only because that door swings and crowds them so they push this way. And then through here, and into the scale. And they, they're getting better, like every time you put a, a lamb through the handling system, they remember and they get better every single time. So it shouldn't take long, there's not many in this pen. And I have no idea how many are even going to be ready. They are October, November, December, January. They're five months old, just the beginning of their fifth month. So this pen, that side will be cleaned out this month. They will all get sold. The lambs that aren't 105 and over, I'm not even scanning because I'm just finding it a lot easier for my records uh, because I'm doing it every week or every other week just to scan the ones that are ready. And then when that session comes up in my notes, it's so much easier to say, oh, I shipped 13 that week or 10 that week instead of having to sort like sort the report out and figure out which ones were over 105 pounds and then, and then figure out how many I shipped. It's just... A lot easier. I really want the overall average daily gain when these guys are all done. I really don't care about week to week unless there's like something going on health wise or the weather's crazy then you could probably do some tracking on gains if they've slowed up or anything like that but for for what I need for the information that I need I just need which one, I just need to know which ones are ready for market and how long it took them to get there. This, this one's a twin lamb born September 8th. It's a Rito cross and it's 106 pounds. So it's at overall daily gain is only about 0.63 uh, and it's a ram lamb. So probably not the greatest, but uh, here we are. gone through are both in that 92 to 95 92 to 98 so they're they're at least pretty even in a couple weeks they'll be exactly where these guys were so that one's a really good one 119 pounds
I have to say they're moving in so much nicer. I can't believe from week to week how much how much better they get. A question I've been getting every day for like the last week and I keep forgetting to mention it. We do not castrate our male, our ram lambs. Uh, my lambs are five months pretty much when they're all out of my barn. I haven't, we haven't ever castrated our ram lambs and I don't think we've been penalized for it. Okay, they're all weighed and I have them in their little pen here. So I'm gonna give you like five seconds. Guess in your head. Last time I shipped 13 and the time before then I shipped nine. So how many do you think are in this pen today to ship? Tomorrow night. I'll give you five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. There's 15. So if you guess 15, you're brilliant. Here they are here. They have a nice big pen. I gave them some hay. Not too many left in this pen. We're getting down to the, really just the, probably the multiples and uh, likely the ewe lambs. They're just, they take a little bit longer getting to market. But for the most part, uh, most of those lambs were over 90 pounds. So I would think in the next couple weeks, they'll be, they, they are gonna go by the end of February any, anyway, but the next couple weeks will be a lot more. Look how they sleep against the wall. Isn't that awesome? They have all this room and they lay there. So I'm trying to kind of figure out how to do my little demonstration of kind of what's left in a lamb check after you, sell, after you sell your lambs, after you sell your market lambs. So I'm going to go off the 13 that I sold a couple weeks ago because I have the check. Uh, but I really like, if you looked, if you watched Mark's video a couple weeks ago, I think it was last week, on his bushel of corn and how much is left in a bushel of corn when he gets all his expenses paid, it was for me, I was like, even I was like, I actually get that. So I kind of like the visual of that. So I'm trying to figure out a way to do that with my sheep. So I'm going to get a little creative this afternoon. I got to figure out what expenses I need to put against these lambs. Problem is like most of this, the barn expenses over here are pretty separated out. Like I, I should be able to really pull them out of my, uh, of my data. The problem is it's kind of an average over a year because I'm never all in, all out. Not really. Uh, there's always some new lambs coming in and, and not the other ones aren't always all out. So, and then the feed tank, when I get a new load of feed, it, even the feed tanks never completely empty. So I kind of go, got to go by an average of, um, what got brought in in a year and then put it over how many animals I finished over here. So that's all going to be very, very like rough, really rough numbers. But I just want to give you guys a sense of, you know, what is actually left in a lamb check when I sell my lambs. My friend just brought me a tray of baking goods. And this girl works two jobs. She is like the hardest working person I know and she brings me baked goods because she feels bad for me. I have very, very wonderful friends. I have spent the afternoon going through numbers, racking my brain, calling a friend, calling my chief financial officer, which is my sister. I love her so much, she's so smart. So, Mark did a video last week and what he did is he measured out a bushel of corn and he took all his cost, cost of goods sold out of that bushel of corn. So he made it very, for me even, I was like, I get it. So he had a lot of people asking him if I could make a very similar video only with like a sale of a load of lambs. I do have all the costs, what I think are associated with everything. But instead of showing you all raw numbers and figures, because everybody's numbers are gonna look different because you're gonna, your feed costs are gonna be different than mine. Your straw is gonna cost, like stuff is gonna be a little bit different. So what I did is I took a percentage. So this load I had, I had 13 lambs go um, to my sale barn. What I did is I figured out all my costs associated with that sale. So I sold 13 lambs. So I got 13 lambs on the trailer and what I'm gonna do for every uh, cost of goods sold that I have to take into account, I'm gonna pull that percentage of a lamb off the trailer and whatever I'm left with is what I actually got to take home at the end of the day. Now, in saying this, these are just like my expenses to raise that lamb. It is does not cover property taxes, it does not cover mortgage, it doesn't cover that stuff. So I left that stuff out of it. I'm just doing the actual feed, labor, 
hydro. So I did things a little bit differently. There is a whole bunch of benefits on putting some, some costs associated, associated to each lamb over onto the U. But in this case, I'm just pretending that my sheep barn sold my finishing barn, my lamb barn, that lamb. So it was a 50 pound lamb at eight weeks of age. The, these lambs were weaned in November. So I took that off the, uh, the, oh, the Ontario Sheep website and it was around $200 $200 a pound for a 50 pound lamb. So I said my lamb cost me $100. So I'm starting there, just so you know. I think I have my percentages figured out. So here are kind of what I have broke down. I have the deductions off the actual check. So the deductions are like check off, uh, commission, insurance. Um, I think that's it for, for the check off off the actual sale barn check. The lamb itself, when I bought it, I'm saying I bought it from my sheep barn. The grain rations, so my my ration, rem remember, is like homegrown corn, but I just pretended I sold the corn to ourselves, from ourselves. And also a grain supplement, so that's mixed together in a ration. I figured out how much that cost me. I feed dry hay, and I'm actually buying that, so that was a little easier to figure out. The hydro, I did over the whole entire year, divided by how many lambs I grew this year. Some of the costs I did, I had to do that, like labor and hydro, I kind of had to do it over, I took, I took it over the year and then divided by how many lambs I sold this year. The straw was part of it, and then the RFID tags and the trucking to get them to the market. So those are legit all the expenses I have on these 13 lambs, and only because there was nothing wrong with these 13 lambs. If you had vet bills, if there was any that were sick, or if any of these were you lambs that I had to vaccinate, then that would be all different. So these are just literally the ones I sold a couple weeks ago to the sale barn. Here we go, so for pet percentages, pretend I just have the trailer, and I have 13 little sheepies on the trailer. I am going to pull off the sheep as the costs start to accumulate. So right off the bat, the actual lamb, the purchasing of these lambs, these 13 lambs at eight weeks old was about 39% of that actual trailer load. So we're gonna take off five lambs right off the top out of the trailer. So the next uh, big one is the deductions right off the paycheck and that's looking like 5%. So I'm not gonna quite take off a lamb yet because it's only 0.7. Let's put that 0.7 in with my hay cost. And my hay cost is 0.3 of a lamb. So 0.3 and 0.7 is another lamb. So let's take off another lamb. So we are already down six lambs out of that, out of that 13. The next one is the actual lamb ration. That's a big one. It was 7.9% of my total cost which we can take off another lamb. All right, now we're getting into some some smaller ones. Hydro is only 0.1 of a lamb. Straw is only 0.27 of a lamb. Labor is 0.54 of a lamb. So we're at 0.9 of a lamb so far. And if I add the RFID tag, that's another 0.1, which is our nut, which is our next lamb. So now we're up to pulling off eight lambs already. And then the trucking is another 0.26 of a lamb. So we're pulling off about 8.3-ish lambs. Like I, these are just rough. Looking like the cost before, you know, property taxes, mortgage, all that stuff. I did not even touch that stuff because that is way beyond my pay grade. My gross margin is 64.55%, which isn't, if I listened to Larry's podcast the other day, it's not very good, I don't think. I think I think it's probably better to be at about 70. So I got some work to do, and the one that popped off big time for me was the labor costs. I'm like, I don't even spend that much time over there, and when you do it over a year, it's looking like the only way to get your labor costs down is to have more lambs. So again, matches up with my goals for 2020, which is to have more lambs. It makes a big difference when you start breaking this stuff down. My cost out of those 13 lambs cost me 8.39 of those lambs. So I'm only left with 4.6 lambs are left on the trailer. Or let's just round up and say there's five lambs left on the trailer and we pulled off eight just to keep stuff simple. So that shows you that, you know, even before the barn expense, the mortgage, all that stuff, um, you really gotta know your numbers because it feels like I get the paycheck and I looked at it and I'm like, sweet, it looks really good. 
And I mean, there's a lot of, we get a lot of benefits uh, growing our own feed, uh, growing our own lambs, and the more costs that we can put attribute to that ewe, and the ewe has more than one lamb, obviously, like those costs all of a sudden start to really, um, they spread out over more lambs, right? So everything becomes a little more efficient when it's a, when it's a complete and closed system. But, you know, if I was just buying lambs and finishing them, it's just, it's a good way to kind of see that um, these things can add up really, really fast. Sitting down and doing this like once a year for me is a really good exercise because I just pretend it doesn't exist. And for me, it just points out that some of these things I can, I can make a little more efficient. There's some things I can't control, like the price of stuff is maybe something I can't really control, but but you know, that labor cost I can do, and that's why we've automated a lot of the stuff. It's why I put in the proportioner in the barn. Um, I can do like three jobs at the same time. So quite, quite literally over there every day, I'm only over there for maybe 10 minutes. So that's what I mean. I gave, I said it cost me an hour a day because there are some days that, it, that I'm over there for more than an hour. Today I was weighing lambs, so I was over there for probably, probably an hour or two hours, but the bigger the groups, the more time it takes. So just for, I just thought that was an interesting um, thing for you guys to see. I love the way Mark did his video. If you haven't checked it out, check out that if you're ever curious as to how much, how much is actually left in a bushel of corn when you take off all the, all the input prices and all the costs. It is really truly quite shocking. Anyway, I hope that helps. Let me know if you like this kind of stuff. I'm trying to kind of incorporate a little bit of business in little baby steps because this really hurts me. So I, I wanted to make it so everyone could, people that farm and people that don't farm could kind of get the gist of, of just how much things cost to grow. It does cost a lot of money. So anyway, I hope you liked it. Thank you, have a good night, take care.